Do all FNAF theorists think the same? Today we will be answering that question with my good friends Underscore, Inky Ink and Psychic. You may want to think about putting this in the background and doing something else while you listen to it as this is going to be more of an audio kind of video rather than a watch through kind of video. <laughs> you can also listen to this on SoundCloud and possibly Spotify, but I'll update you on that. Okay, so let's get started. The first prompt I am going to give you guys is I dislike the concept of FNAF AR skins. So do you agree or disagree with that statement? I am being very careful with words. I agree that I like the concept of skins. Where my problems with them start is, first of all, like the whole Winter Wonderland I don't know why he's laughing. Uh, like, every single character was ice. Now, like, Ballora was, like, the best-looking one. But, like, they were all ice. And also, having each skin cost... What is it? How much How much does it cost for a skin, Inky? Do you know? It's, like, 50, It's, like, 20 bucks. Yeah, I don't know. If Wait, you want to you... just buy the Hold skin... Hold on, did you, did you say 20 bucks? I don't know. Maybe it is. Should I check? You should probably check because if that if they're charging that much for skins, I what? I, I don't. Yes, the, the maybe that's from mega pack. That, that, that's where my problem is. Like it's like it costs a lot of money just to get like the just like for like the little event, and it's like I don't know, like something about like like imagine like imagine like like okay, let's say hypothetically they're fifteen bucks, and there's and you want all of them from one like event. Um, that would be like four animatronics. That'd be like sixty bucks you're spending on a mobile game for skins. It's like if they were like five bucks, I'd be, I'd be, I'd be fine with it. But like, and they, and they might be. We, we should probably find out the exact. We price. probably should. Okay, so the they've got the um the uh the like the the arcade animatronics in the shop right now. Maybe I was a little wrong. You know, I swear some cost around 15 these ones are about eight bucks each currently that's still a lot that is still cosmetic. that is still a lot for cosmetic especially considering you could get it from like animatronic trading with friends mm -hmm. so yes i like the idea of skins i like how like oh it's a cool idea and there are some really cool looking skins but like the price and them just base they, they don't even like change up the gameplay at all i'm pretty sure it's just like it's just i like the concept I don't like the implementation. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> this is going to be so, amazing. Let's talk about skins. And I plan on doing a, a, a whole separate video about this in the future. But... So, okay. You have me in a little bit of a tough spot there with the, with the exact wording of the question. Do I... Uh, do I like the concept of skins? And... I would, I would at first go with Psychic in his thing where I like the concept but not the execution. But the more I think about it, I just really don't like the concept. So I'm going to go strongly disagree. <laughs> uh, or wait, no, wait, hold on. No. It was dislike the concept of skins, wasn't it? Okay, strongly agree, then. Whichever one is the skins bad. Um, <laughs> I think... Well, first of all, let's talk about ideal skins. If you want to, if you want to charge money, like microtransactions for skins, first of all, I don't, I'm not a fan of microtransactions in the first place, but I understand that it is a semi valid business tactic, especially with smaller mobile games. Uh, if they want to do skins, which like, sure, I guess you can do skins if you want, it keeps the game interesting. Why not use the plethora of of variations each character has already instead of making crappy OCs. Uh, <laughs> like, it, 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 it boggles my mind why, like, the, wither the Withered animatronics aren't in there yet, are they? Like, that, that's an easy skin for, for, the, for the basic ones, I would say. Um, unless they wanted to go with completely different gameplay for each of them. The Phantoms are another thing. The nightmares, I think, are a little bit more towards like separate characters, but 
a lot of there's still a lot of potential for canon based skins but so with that out of the way i would i you know skins from a purely theoretical ideal concept would be fine probably for some characters for other characters take springtrap for example unless you want to do a scrap trap skin maybe a glitch trap skin there's not much else you can do without that breaking the intention of the character and the the lore behind it. And I don't think a lot of the skins are canon. Sorry, underscore. You know uh, what? I really don't care at this point. <laughs> um, you were you were you're kind of fight. You were fighting a battle, and I, I respect that. You're trying to trying to make them fit, but I a lot of them I really don't think. I don't, is... I don't think it works anymore. Anyways, I, I I could care less at this point. All right. So. With that out of the way, let's talk about the specific uh, horrific offenses to the FNAF, uh, to the oh FNAF gosh. image. Oh my gosh, how far is this, is this going to go? <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll pick out a few examples. Uh, let's see. Uh, not a fan of the just different color like colorizations of Freddy. Uh, I, I get that Frostbear's kind of a different character, but basically he's blue Freddy. What, what are you going to do? Uh, same thing with like Shamrock Freddy. There's a few tolerable skins, in my opinion. Uh, you know, some of them look decent. Um, but then there are the ones that just really take away from the intention of the character. Like, these are animatronics th that are at an 80s kid's restaurant. And they're supposed to look uncanny. They're supposed to be creepy, especially at night, because they're haunted, and they're going to come kill you. And then we get skins like American Freddy. <laughs> what are you... <sighs> I hate American Freddy so much. <laughs> not, not enough Chica. guns. You got the. You got the. Uh, there's so many. There. There's so many, and like some of them look all right. If I were to take them from a purely design standpoint, those look nice. Uh, Ozone, what you got your finger up? Uh, yeah. Uh, can I? Can I get? Can I get your opinion on Eight Bit Baby? Eight Bit Baby. I've been told that's a separate character because I used to think it was a skin, but apparently it's a separate character. Eight Bit Baby Wait, is is, it? is a good. Oh, yeah. I'm pretty sure it is a separate character. Eight Bit Anyways. Baby is its own character with its own CPU. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Never mind then. But if we were to categorize that in the sort of same area as skins, uh, that is a prime example of what a skin or alternate version of a character should be because that's that that's a cool idea make like make more 8-bit versions of the characters because those are real those aren't those aren't american freddy uh and uh a lot of them the more recent ones obviously okay the i'm i'm, I'm trying not to take them by event because i don't want to run too long uh but the the fire ones you got the endo the endo is all right i guess one of the higher up ones uh, you got the you got the burning chica. If you want to, if you want to go that far and say that maybe the animatronic was eventually burned, sure. You got the boiler baby. Mm. Nah, boiler baby is one of those ones that like looks cool for a second, then you think about it and it doesn't make sense and kind of takes away from the character, in my opinion. Flaming springtrap. Springtrap was set on fire, but if he was that engulfed in flames, he would probably cease to exist your overall opinion is you hate them uh i just want before i move on <laughs> i'm uh. sorry i'm gonna talk about uh the 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 haunted forest and the snow ones uh i, I forget, actually do I think that's a very good idea um because i like the designs but they are wait, wait, not what? i like i like i like some of the designs there but my problem with them is that they got so lost in making the design unique and fit with the theme that they are no longer robots, they're no longer animatronics, they're no longer Five Nights at Freddy's characters. I, I ran a test. I put that little frozen balloon boy, little snowman, blizzard balloon boy. I took the face, just it's the obvious. face. I took the face, and I sent it to people that I knew, and without any context. I'm just, what is this from? And I had I had people answer Doctor Who. Like it doesn't look like FNAF anymore. Like you cannot tell. You cannot tell that it is FNAF. It's no longer Balloon Boy. Uh, so while I think those designs are cool, they fit more in like SCP or something. Anyways, that is my long uh, rant tirade about the skins. I apologize for keeping you 
so long, and I should probably have saved some of that for the video I plan on making. But um, yeah, strongly agree. I do not like the skins. I'll I'll keep this uh, quick, unlike uh, someone. So we have the skins, and I would say I slightly disagree. Like skins and concept in FNAF AR, yeah, it's a cool way to keep things kind of unique. And some of these skins look really cool, but where it there's two places it really falls with me, and it's it's the microtransactions. They're so expensive, and the skins that they just did they they just aren't good. Like nobody wants Liberty Chica and American Freddy, and I'll say I don't exactly like the woodland or the winter designs, but that that's just me, of course. But just some of the designs are so bad, and they. Illumix should really be putting a lot of effort into making the making the skins. They they need to make it so people want those to be maybe their new favorite character. You know, they need to make them good instead of just kind of putting out filler characters every once in a while. So I'll say, yeah, skins are okay. They're pretty cool, but there's a couple points that they've missed me on. Like imagine, imagine a balloon boy skin that's just JJ or DD or Zorzor. Like there's so there's or so the many Zorzor. already there. I don't know who uh, Zorzor is, but um, what about like the eight bit balloon boy from the mini games? Like I remember exactly. EP brought there's up... already yeah. so... and like sorry, I kind of hijacked underscores, but like, there's care. already was... so many. There's so many that they can do, and they they just don't. Yeah, and yeah, and I would love to see the withereds or the nightmares in yeah. AR, and they should really do those eventually but they they should have done them by now at least i agree with a lot of the points that you guys have all said um psychic and underscore about like the um like the cost of it like that's terrible um they shouldn't be doing that but i really like the the concept of skins again um like you make a good point about balloon boy balloon boy is just he hasn't had a good skin, has he? Really? Um, I, nope. Yeah, he, he just hasn't had a good skin. Um, so there are really good parts of FNAF AR skins. Like I really like that they're doing this, um, especially with like events and stuff. I like that idea, but they haven't executed it amazingly. So I'd say I'm in the middle. I'd say I'm in the middle. I don't know if you guys see this, but like there are like videos on YouTube of like people who have made like their own like animations for FNAF AR characters, and some of them like 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 you could like, just like withered ones, and those look really cool. And like I feel like Illumix should put their effort into like making stuff like that rather than you know I don't know Ice. a flaming balloon boy with with firework Freddy. I don't know. <laughs> Like, imagine, just, like, imagine like fire and ice balloon boy, where he's half engulfed in flames and half ice, and he still should, and he should, still doesn't have his face. We've got so many good ideas, man. We should we should propose these. Out Anyways. of interest, Todoroki what, balloon boy. Out of interest, what are your favorite skins? That's what I was going to ask, actually. Um, <laughs> I you know I I've, been, I've not really played FNAF AR a lot. Um, however, from just like watching videos, um. I really like 8-Bit Baby. I know she's not really a skin, but it's just, like, it's, like, such, like, a cool concept that's, like, actually taken from such a location. It's the the mini-games where she kills the kid. Like I said, it it's really two categories. It's purely design and then actual tolerability. Um, I think I'm, as far as relevance and not corrupting what's there too much... I actually am one of the very small minority of actually kind of liking Easter Bonnie because I feel like it's an animatronic that Fazbear Entertainment could have realistically made as a variation of Bonnie. I forgot about uh, him. But as far as design, as far as design point, uh, design standpoint, like I said, I do kind of like. I like how Blizzard Balloon Boy and Swamp Balloon Boy. I like how they look. They just aren't FNAF, and I, um, I. You know, the Boulder Toy Bonnie also looks cool. I really enjoy the design of uh, Boulder Toy Bonnie because it, it gives me Shadow Bonnie vibes. And we should mm. really get Shadow Bonnie as a skin. How cool would that be? You guys have had good cool. choices. I Personally, my favorite might actually be like Ringmaster Foxy or something. I, oh, I, I don't know what, what is I, about him. I, I really like I, 
I also like Ringmaster Foxy. He's pretty I cool. Like the, I like the whip. I just forgot about all these guys. <laughs> okay, the next prompt that we will be discussing is Balloon Boy is annoying. Alright, so I am going to say that I disagree. While, yes, the hello is like a little bit annoying, him as a character in FNAF 2 is really cool how it's like he himself won't kill you, but he will cripple you. I don't know a better word for it, but he will like... That works. Yeah, cripple you and make you not be able to stop Withered Foxy. And it's like this like tag team, which I don't know if we've ever seen, bef seen before or since, where it's like one animatronic, if you let it get you, then that will severely disadvantage you for another animatronic. And I think that's such a really cool concept, but we've never really seen it again, I don't think. I believe Balloon Boy to be one of the original examples of a very unique and original character coming into the Five Nights at Freddy's series. It was not only the first humanoid animatronic to my knowledge, unless you count the puppet, um, but it was a very unique concept. I don't find the sounds annoying. In fact, they become an integral <laughs> part of the story in Five Nights at Freddy's 3 as they help keep Springtrap away from you. And while Balloon Boy can potentially be devastating to a run using his uh, swiping of your batteries. I think that he's pretty easily uh, fended off with the mask, and he's a very pleasant force that sort of chats with you as you sit in the office, laughing, <laughs> laughing away, saying hello, having a nice old time with you. Uh, there's so many little nicknames for him, uh, like Timmy, uh, like Ooh. just just uh back in the early days and all and of course the variations there are there dd is crap nobody cares about dd balloon oh boy gosh. balloon boy is such an integral character and uh, uh, all right i'm i'm uh, i'm done with that uh, balloon boy is all right i guess yeah he's pretty cool uh, so i'm going to have to strongly disagree i don't think he's annoying i will say that balloon boy is not annoying people just give him a bad rap and i think i know why he he's a pretty cool character well okay the thing is if you take a look at fnaf 2 collectively he's the character he, he's the character that people would hate the most compared to everybody else there he's the one that would receive the most dislike because he's not the coolest you see what i mean so i would say people are just giving him a bad rap and he's not a bad character he's just not a liked character much and then what's bad about this is that adding on to that a lot of people really hate swamp bb and frostbite bb including me illumix has not done him justice i'd say but i guess i'd have to disagree he's not annoying like there's nothing annoying about him if he ruins your game then that's your fault but yeah he's not he's not annoying well that's a really cool opinion underscore strongly agree Okay, I strongly I, agree. There's something about. <laughs> oh wait, Frank. There's mind. something about. There's something about Balloon Boy's face that just makes me want to punch it. Um, <laughs> so, nice. Inky, your point about him talking to you and saying like "hello" it's just it's it's annoying. It's like infuriating. It's mocking me. Like, just please go away. Also, he disables your flashlight. Like, like that, that's fault. annoying. It's your fault for letting him in. Yeah, well, it's Scott's fault for making him in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> this is hilarious. This is great. <laughs> okay, so the next prompt that we are going to be looking at is, I like where the series is going with Security Breach. This one's an interesting one. I really like the fact that it's, it's, and we, we can all agree that this is all after FNAF 6 and Ultimate Custom Night. I like how well, they've made it so there's a new killer, and there's a reason why she's killing, without just being, oh, it's a purple guy again. Like, I, it's more complex. Well, yes, it's like, oh, she's, like, possessed or whatever. It's still, like, like interesting, and it's, like, it's kind of, like, moving past the first six games and onto its own new act, I'll call it. Like, you know, like, 
FNAF 1 through 6 is like Act 1, and this is now we're on Act 2, and I like how it's like, leaving that behind may still make references to it, like with the It's Me in Curse of Dreadbear, but I like how it moves on, and it it's really, it's it's kind of like, I remember like someone said this earlier, it's kind of like a start over, because we, we to, to learn about the lore of security breach and stuff, we don't have to pick through all FNAF 1 lore, FNAF 2 lore, FNAF 3 lore, because we already know all we need to know from FNAF VR, and I like that. Uh, all right. I I've been pretty like back and forth through all these questions, but for once, I think I'm going to put myself in the neutral category. Um, let's see. I am interested to see what Security Breach does, and there are things that it has going for it, uh, like Vanny in particular. Uh, but I don't feel like we've seen enough for me specifically to be super excited for it. Obviously I'm excited for the game. It's probably going to be amazing and I'm going to play it. Uh, but as for in general, where the series is going, I don't think I have a good enough read of what's going to, what's going to happen. I do like that. It's a bit more simple. I'm not quite the biggest fan of, uh, the, the glam rock animatronics in particular. So hopefully we get some more, uh, unique and creepy designs. Uh, for example, I like, um, I mean, the moon drop looks cool. Um, if they were to bring something, something that looks like Blackbird from Fazbear Friday, if they were going to bring that into a game, that would be absolutely horrifying. In my opinion, Blackbird is one of the best designed characters in a while. I've, oh, I'd say, God. um, so as far as the general future of FNAF, I'm kind of neutral. Maybe slightly agree as far as I'm excited for what they're doing with Security Breach. But I'm sort of just waiting to see what they have to offer. Now, for me, unlike Inky, I do believe I have a good read of what's going on. And I will wholeheartedly agree that Security Breach is probably going to be amazing, and I'm very excited. So, just wondering... How many of you have read the leaked AR emails? I have, like, I have, like, I haven't, like, read them, like, from top to bottom, but I, I know the basic contents of the leaked AR oh, emails. I took a glance. They are so amazing. You don't understand. And, and it's not, I mean, yeah, they're special delivery emails, but there's so much going on that it hypes me up for security breach like okay a lot of it pertains to like special delivery backstory but then again there's a lot about vanny and i suppose a lot we already knew but it just shows the inner workings and it's really like those emails are basically a prequel to security breach they're showing us what's going on before the game even begins and that's why i think i have a pretty good view on what's gonna happen though i'm probably gonna be absolutely like wrong scott's got a bunch of twists up his sleeve but I will say, from what I know so far, I am very hyped up. I'm pretty hyped for the game. Um, I I think, uh, as Inky said, the animatronics are okay. Like, I feel like they could have gone further with it. Um, but I guess we'll just have to kind of wait and see. Um, I think I also have a lot of trust in Scott and Steelwall in the fact that they said it would come in 2020, and we are here right now, beginning of 2021, and they are saying later 2021. Um, so that means it's a big game, and it's probably got really good graphics, and it's and it's going to be like a banger, a certified banger, as I like to call it. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm really hyped, and as you were saying, underscore the lore as well. Uh, it seems like it's gonna be very deep, and it's and it's a restart to the series as well, um, which is good. What I will say was, like, oh yeah, is I had a few comments on my videos saying, oh, I hate where the law is going because Henry had this amazing massive speech mm -hmm. at the end of FNAF six, uh, and then it all of it was ruined because William Afton came back, um, and I, I I sort of agree with that. Uh, in some senses, because it was an epic speech. We we will have to yes. like best video of game course, of course. Best epic. video game. <laughs> like one liners but, like um, that are like if you if you could said 
stuff like uh, there's a special spot in hell for you. You don't survive that. You're not supposed to survive that. <laughs> I know. Uh, it, it's kind of irony in a way because William Afton always comes back. Anyway, um, <laughs> aside from that, that's like the only down point, like massive down point I really have for that is is the fact that it's kind of just like keeps going on. Uh, that's not really a down point. I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying anymore. But I, I... agree that um i i'm really excited for security breach um i just want to see what we have in store for it really just want i just want it right now <laughs> i have one last thing to say personally uh and it's another reason that i uh i've realized that it's one of the things that i can't really get into security breach just yet and it's it's a very nitpicky personal thing but Obviously, it was inevitable, but I feel like it's sort of losing that indie touch. Uh, something about it being a big production company, and obviously there are there are going to be pros to that. It's going to be it's probably going to be huge, great graphics. But part of it, I'm going to miss that little that indie feel that uh, the earlier games had, and that's why I'm a bit more hesitant to see where it's going. I think that's a good point. I I think once Security Breach comes out, we like we'll all be like what is five nights at freddy's anymore like is it an indie game is it this um what was it called free is it's a free like it looks like it's gonna be a free roam right a free roam game right. so like that's that's not like the original fnaf formula so it's kind of scary in that sense it, it, we're, we're, we're stepping into new boundaries and and that's what's kind of concerning like like when yeah. it comes to this new company and new gameplay, like we don't know what's going to happen. We've had VR and AR. Sure, those were like there were new formats to the same kind of formula, but this is a new formula in a new format, and it's going to be really scary to enter. But it'll probably be. I suppose I can't say for certain, but I'm pretty sure Scott will definitely pull it off in a good way. And remember, even though this is being run by a new company like like a company and it's not an indie game it's still scott game and he is still running it he makes all the and in the end he makes all the decisions and he knows what's most likely good for us has he really made besides okay let's ignore ar has he really made many mistakes because ar is the only game he's really left the company to care about more what oh Oh, okay. Um, I was about to say, like, don't uh, dissing down. Um, I'm not. I'm I mean, not FNAF AR. World was like a learning experience. I feel like FNAF okay. World was something. Yeah, I he think, changed. Um, the, he changed the formula for that one and, mm -hmm. and didn't do of, well. Of course, I so, don't want to. I don't want to try and invalidate Scott's work here, but yeah, obviously, um, some t obviously, uh, it can't. Re one of the reasons it can't really stay that indie feel forever is because, uh. He he did try and sort of get it. It ended up being a little bit too big for the the way he was doing it. You know, like uh, an easy uh, thing to point out, especially like somewhat in FNAF Six and especially in Ultimate Custom Night was like jump scare quality with the larger yeah. with the larger scale, the larger ambition. The technical hardware just couldn't really support that anymore. So that I understand uh, going to bigger and better things, but. Um, yeah, you're you're right. Scott hasn't really when it's when it's just him, he he does deliver. And so when when we broaden the scope of things, I'm I'm a little I mean I wouldn't say concerned, but I'm a little hesitant. So I have a point when you guys are talking about changing the formula. Um, well, yes, free roam is like so far from FNAF one. I feel like at some point it had to change. Because I feel like, like, you can't do the same thing forever. It'll just become boring and stale. And, like, with these, yeah, like, I, the jump there quality, like, in, like, FNAF 6 and FNAF Ultimate Cousin Night, it's just, like, it wasn't as good, and it wasn't as scary. And I feel like he's done a lot of, like, the whole sitting in an office. Like, he did that in all all seven games, all eight games up to this point, if you include, well, um, if you, if you include, um, custom night from sister location then he's All done right, yeah. then he's done a version of that in every single game so and like, it might even appear in this game which is okay 
but it has it can't be the same thing over and over again. Otherwise, it it becomes stale. Like c- consider this. He basically yeah, he's hit he's hit he used all he could. He did all he could basically and he's hit his point like ultimate custom night was the breaking point for how far he could go. And now that he's hit that, he needs to kind of get this other company on board to kind of go farther than that. Right, yeah. And mm-hmm. also, I had an idea. Consider, you know how, um, for, for like talking about free the possibilities of free roam, you know how uh, Gregory is kind of chilling inside of Glamrock Freddy? Yeah. Consider that will either be either Glamrock Freddy or Montgomery run, like running away or hiding, or will be Vanny. So either way, we'll either be be chased or be the chaser, Ooh. or maybe be both. Like, um, or I, I could see both. I could see perspective shifts in the game, which would be really cool. But but just consider, we'll either be we have to be one of those two. We'll either be being chased or we'll or be the one chasing. Maybe we're either Vanny or Vanessa. Uh, or that's or a, that's you a, know what? I would play. I wouldn't mind that. Everybody. I wouldn't mind that. I would. I would actually really enjoy like yeah. being like, oh, you can pick where, whether to kill the kid or protect the kid. Yeah. Like, I feel like that would be such a cool thing and but, get like two endings. That would be so we need, cool. We need to have one canon ending though. Like one yeah. of them needs to be like yeah. like the sister location fake ending. Mm-hmm. I think an interesting. I think an interesting thing that they definitely could do, and I think would be a really interesting concept. And I'm let's let's not get too into just security breach speculation because that's not really what's happening with the video. But I think an interesting thing is that maybe for like uh, some whatever like daytime segments we play as uh, Vanessa and going off of the assumption that uh, Vanessa is Vanny, which I strongly believe, um, I think maybe the other segments, I don't know if it would be day and night, but the other segments, we'd be Gregory trying to escape Vanny and then there would be the big reveal that the char- the other character we've been playing as is the one working against the character we're also playing as. Wait a minute. <laughs> so, elaborating on that nighttime and daytime kind of thing, we have the yeah, sun. Cap- we have mm-hmm. we have the sun and moon animatronics. Sun drop or moon drop and sunrise. I assume I, it has to There's be all- sunrise. It has I've, to be I've all- sunrise or sun uh, something. I don't know, but. I've always considered this Jekyll and Hyde kind of thing. We mm-hmm. we have no idea yeah. if Vanessa is is just like Vanny in hiding, or if Vanessa is like a completely different personality to Vanny. Right. Let's not get too into that. Yeah. 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 Um, Save I'm, all your thoughts. I do want to say. I do want to say. I think Scott should make a an Among Us ripoff where there's ten Seems Vanessas like... and one of us one of us is a Vanny. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that would be funny. <laughs> that would be amazing. Yo, we need an Among Us security breach map. Yes. Oh, um, let's do that, it. Let's do it. If they collaborated, that'd be so cool. Imagine if it was multiplayer. That'd be so cool. I <laughs> okay. So well, cool. They could do like a mode with the map where they do Vanny versus kind of uh, animatron. Like, yeah, multiplayer. I could see it being a thing. I probably wouldn't like it, but I could see it. Super Smash Bros. Like, no. Yo. We are, we are, we are going to play Mario 3D World online when it comes out, right? <laughs> no. Anyway. Super FNAF Bros. Super, Super FNAF Bros. <laughs> wait, wait, right. wait. Predictions. Oh. Will Security Breach end in a fire? That is... <laughs> That'd be that, very, you know what? Be that is the question thing. everybody wonders. You know what? Does I'm going to say yes. Like, I'm going to say yes. I, I, I'm going to say 50-50. It, has, it could. It has potential. Imagine the final level is escaping the building. Okay, so consider this. Or There's like a no... attic from Joy Creation like thing where uh, it's like the building's burning around you have to finish your task or whatever. Well, consider this. There's nobody oh there with the motivation to burn it down. Like True. Michael or Henry would have, but they're gone. True. Or are they? Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. They are. They Cyborg Henry coming out of the fire. That would be anyway, awesome. <laughs> I, need, I need to go eat and then drink. So, I also fine. need to go eat. What are you going to drink? Some alcohol. That's what I thought, you alcoholic. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. If you did enjoy, make sure that you give this video a like and you subscribe to me so that you can see my next upload. I am going to get a drink now. 
So, yeah. Lovely.